Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is, we're Grumpy Sheep Happy Lama and we're talking to you from Eastern Ontario, Canada. Uh, today is January 15, but you won't see this until the 19th of January, which is a Wednesday, as long as everything goes well. I'm Robin. I'm Sylvie. And we are knitting and spinning and weaving and sewing and all the things making podcasts. Yep. Whatever we come up with recently. Yep. So there we go. So welcome to our podcast. Yes, welcome, welcome to returning viewers. And welcome to anybody who's new. It's Yay. nice to see you. Not that I actually see you, but still, theoretically, it's nice to see you. <laughs> so, technically, we're just going to, what we normally do is we talk about what we're wearing, and then we go into our, our cows and finished objects, our whips, and um, any sewing or weaving that we may have. And I apologize if you're hearing some tings. tings. That's my messenger. Uh, our friends are planning some stuff, I guess. So Game everyone's on, on there tinging away. So Louise, don't go looking for your phone. No. It's not you, it's us. <laughs> so, um, what are you wearing? I am wearing Sunset Highway by Kate yes. and Hunter. I knit this, yeah, yeah 2018 maybe, 2019. Yeah. I think probably 2018, closer to that. And it's knit with uh, Sweet Georgia yarn. She had some green. I ran it, so I had to make this a short sleeve sweater. And then I had gold from Sweet Georgia. Tough Love Sock, I think mm -hmm. it's called. And then the other colors are Pandia's jewels that I had in my stash. Yeah, they're and speckled use. and sparkly too, eh? Yeah, I've got yeah, one sparkle in nice. so I, I yeah. kind of like it. Oh yeah, and I showed you my bra, that my, matches my car. <laughs> <laughs> it's green, I love green. Yay. Yeah, so anyway, and Sylvia, what are you wearing? Uh, I'm not wearing anything knitted, but this is a, my first top that I sewed, probably in the last, fall I did yeah, this. Last fall. Yeah, so these are my owls. I love my owls. <laughs> and so does my nephew. <laughs> so that's what I'm wearing today. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Good. Yeah. And socks? I'm not wearing oh, socks. Oh, I'm wearing, I'm always wearing my knitted socks. They're just plain vanilla socks that I'm wearing. Yeah. Um, probably knit with, I forget if it was Opal. It looks like Opal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So cows that we have going on, today was a big day. We had a cast on cow Yay. for our Briggs and Little sweater, adult yep. sweater, knit along. And uh, so yes, I, I guess we get to show that in the whips. In the whips, yeah. yeah. We'll talk more about that in the whips. But you're more than welcome to join us. Um, if you don't have any Briggs and Little yarn or you're missing a color, head over to our shop, grumpysheephappylama.ca. We have plenty of selections there for you. Not everything, unfortunately, because Briggs and Little is still catching up. But, but we, we have, have quite a few stuff. selections. Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> so you just an adult size sweater. You yeah. can make whatever pattern you want. We have Heritage, we have Regal, we have Sports, so you can you can use take advantage of any of those bases that we yeah. have and uh and join us in our thread on Ravelry Grumpy yes. Sheep Happy Lama and it's the Briggs and Little adult sweater knit along yep yeah and I think oh we still have the finish those whips we do until March 31st yes oh and this cow the Briggs and Little cow sorry it goes yes. from today today was the cast on date and it goes to the eyes of March which is on what date 15th of March there you go <laughs> just in the case eyes of March just okay, in case yeah. in case you didn't love Shakespeare when you were in high school yeah <laughs> I think that was from Julius Caesar, that one, The Ides of March. I can't remember, I don't know. Just an aside, I was mentioning The Ides of March and that sent me off on a whole tangent with yes. Sylvie before we started <laughs> podcasting or recording because they have a new movie. Apple TV has a new movie with Denzel Washington and Frances McDermott, Macbeth. And mm. it, though I saw the previews on CBC News yesterday and the whole preview, I had goosebumps the entire time. It just looks so really amazing. Good, yeah. So I, I have to watch that. I'm going to get <laughs> Apple TV to have a free for one week. So I'm going to do that just to watch this and then I'll probably cancel. But yeah, yeah it's going to be amazing. Good. So back to our regular discussion yes. program. <laughs> the other cowl is, of course, it's, it was our informal cowl, which is the Strom Cardigan. Um, so we're doing that right now. And that, That's, yeah. yes, it's still a whip for me as well. But we can definitely talk about that in our whip as well. Um, so section. rod and weight is what she's saying. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, that's it, I guess, eh? I think so. For the we, cows. We, the two of us had our own little mini cows. Oh, yes. We'll talk about it in our finished but objects. Yeah. That'll be finished objects, which is coming up. Yes. yes. Okay, so now for our FOs. Yeah. So we were just mentioning the fact that we had our own little mini knit along, Sylvie and I, with our sock club yarns that we had in the fall. And the yarns were dyed by Evie Knits. Yes. So much fun. Yep. And the feedback that we got from that was, please do this again, because people found that we, that that uh, Evie had dyed colors they wouldn't normally ever 
buy. Oh, very true. But they like them. So it's really nice because it pushes you outside your yep. box and it makes you knit with stuff that you would never in a million years choose. Not in a million years, maybe a, a few years Well, I know choose. it's not my color wheel selection. That's no, for sure. but you well, look at them. One, you... one of them, yes. Oh, yeah? But the, the sunflower one. Oh, sunflower Yeah, but nice. uh, the others, not so much. But you look <laughs> but at them and you kind gorgeous. of go, your first reaction is, oh. oh. <laughs> but then you look at it and you go, and then your next thought is, I wouldn't have bought this. Yeah. But then you say, but I like it. I really like it. And so that's what we did. And so we decided to knit till the cows come home. And I'm sure you've heard about us talking, yes, talking about that. I really enjoyed knitting the till the cows come home. Because I knit that one when Lyrical Knits first came out with it. It was a mystery cow at, at that point. I that think was it was in 2018. 2018 and 2019, yeah. eh? Yeah. 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 So so she kept saying, can we do this? Can we do this? <laughs> so sure, how about we do it for this? Yay! So we did it. And that's what we did. So that's yeah. our first FO. Yeah. And they look very. I used uh, brown as my yeah, fourth color. Yeah, and, and I used, used it was uh, grouse. It's called so it was like some dark greens and light and kind of like bluish greens to it. Yeah, yeah. So yay! Apparently, I have a longer neck than some. Well, of <laughs> I think I see. I always say that I knit tighter, and there you go. You knit with a two point. Was it three, three point, point seven five? Yeah. So did I. Here, let's do this. And look at it. It's interesting. She hasn't blocked hers yet. No, but, but you said still, it didn't even, make a difference. Right? Even if I if I did, it's still. Can you hold that end? And look, I'll hold look, it look, here. <laughs> look at the difference. I mean, anyways. Yeah. It still fits me just nice. Well, that's good. I'm sure mine does too, because it just has to wrinkle down, right? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, maybe a little bit tight, but still, I, it's still nice. I still enjoy it. That's good. I didn't even try it on yet. I'm just happy I finished. Because yeah. I'm turning. As X approaches infinity, I am turning into a monogamous knitter. Ooh. Or approaching there, of course, as calculus would say. We'll see how long this lasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm finding that I want to finish things before I start something new. Yeah. So uh, what had happened was I was making this toque, my polka polka toque. Uh oh. And I had purchased this. What? Go ahead. What? <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Oh, it is efficient. I finished off it. It yep. is finished. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Yeah, it is done. And I had purchased this yarn at Unraveled yeah. in uh, Perth. Oh, Look how nice that is. Uh, yeah, I love it. Me too. And so this yarn here is done by Lichen Lace. And then I had picked up some Rowan, um, what's it called? Mohair silk? Yeah, I think Lace? so. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the two colors I had done because I have a brown jacket, a dark, like a chocolate brown jacket. So I wanted to have something that would match that. Yeah. So I'm making this. And so surprisingly, except for the fact that it's got green in here. It still kind of matches white, together. Still, yeah. yeah. It'll go with my brown jacket. And then this will go with my brown jacket. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy. But I had to finish this before I started this. So I was really happy that actually happened. But it also meant that I had to cast on two days later than Sylvie. But she wanted to cast on two days before we were supposed <laughs> to cast on. So, I needed that new cast on. She needed the new <laughs> cast on, which is the reason why we're late for <coughs> this podcast because of yes. COVID and all the consequences of COVID and homeschooling and lockdown and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I ended up <laughs> going to North Bay to help my sister. She is a teacher. And so um, here in Ontario, the schools were closed for one week. So they had to do school online. So this was her first time teaching online with her son who is four years old who just started school. So the last time we were in lockdown, her son was in daycare. So she was fine to do the online schooling, like teaching. She, she was able to do it. But now she had her four-year-old to watch and having to teach. And I'm sure a lot of teachers out there had to struggle to, through that. So, but, um, so I, her husband, unfortunately had to go into work. He couldn't stay home at work. So, um, so I volunteered to go and help her. And uh, yeah, that was quite a busy week, but it was a fun week. Because <laughs> Alex, he is four. He's yes. so cute. Yes, he's four. And, and at first, he, he actually, he did really good for a four-year-old online. At the beginning, he was really engaged and stuff because it was different, you know. But uh, near the end, you could tell he was just done. He was tired. I had to I had to do stuff with him just to get him motivated, you know. And Julie, too, when she was, because I had to work, too. So there's some times where she didn't have a class, so she would be with him. But when she had a class, I was with him. So, yeah, it was. Uh, so it was do they still have nap time at school? For they have quiet times. Okay. Yeah. So what they, he wasn't online all day constantly. What they would do is they'd have blocks, right? So he'd have, like, 40 minutes. And then he'd have maybe an hour off and then back online for maybe a half hour and then an hour off type deal. Oh, so, okay. so I remember, still it was a lot. I remember when Antoine was in pre-kindergarten and he had 
afternoon naps and he would sleep. He was, he's always yeah. been a really good sleeper and he would sleep and then I would pick him up from school and drive him home. And on the way home, he'd pass out cold. And then all I would do is I would pick him up from the back seat of the car and I would put him into bed and he'd sleep until the next morning. Oh my God. Like he would not wake up. He was so exhausted. And he did that probably for the first six months of school. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's, well, it's, there's a lot of stuff going a on for, stuff going for those on. little minds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So that was our, are you, so you showed your, we showed our cow. So I enjoyed yeah. doing that cow. I'm going to, probably going to do it again. Um, but with something else. The same cow? No, oh, yeah, I love oh, that yeah? cow. Very rare that I knit another pattern. Very, oh, very rare. Okay. But that one I really enjoyed because there's some fiber at home that I'm really, really liking. And I'm like, I gotta oh, what's spin. Fiber is that? I don't remember <clears> the name, but I ha I'll show you next time. Okay. What I would like to spin for that. Um, oh, to spin it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I bet you it's BFL. No. Oh, surprisingly <laughs> enough. <laughs> Okay. It's a nice kind of like champagne kind of color way. Anyways, I will show you next time. Cool. Yeah. So you showed your hat. I have a hat too that I finished. So I did the, I knit, remember I wasn't too sure if I should knit this for my mom. It was the, the, the crofters kept um, from the wool week of 2021. Um, 2021 or 2020? No, I'm pretty sure it's 2021. Anyways, okay. 2021, 2020. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I cho chose the coloring one. I bought the kit at the same time that I bought the kit from from, from Sheep's Ahoy. Ahoy. <laughs> so it's not blocked yet. I fin I was able to finish it before I was I headed off to North Bay. I haven't blocked it yet, but I said I know it's coming. I just need to block it. So I'm very very happy with it. It looks like your head has suffered some blood force trauma. <laughs> the nose is flat. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that makes. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. So I'm pretty, pretty, I'm very pleased with how this, I love the star. Love, love, love the star. The colors are really nice. Yeah, it's colorway one. Um, so if that you're interested in the kit, yeah. 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 Here we go. That's what I did. Nice. Yeah, thank nice. you. And your mom likes it. Well, she hasn't seen the finished product yet, uh, but she, she, you know, I told her, play with the yarn, feel it on your head, you think you're going to like it. And she's, yeah, I think it's going to be fine. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. My dad keeps telling me how much he wears his vest. Oh, good. Yeah, he wears the vest that I make him, and he phones me and says, I'm wearing this vest today. <laughs> That's I'm nice. wearing this vest today. So I don't know if he's hinting. I that should make him another, another vest, but he really likes Jameson Maybe. and Smith. So I might have to look for another Jameson and Smith vest That's for him. That's nice. Yeah. But he also liked the last one I did, the wool from that. But it's very similar to it, isn't it? The it toe? is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the toe was quite nice as well. It was a similar, it was a little bit heavier, I think, in the weight, but the... the Texture was right, very was pretty much the same. Yeah, but uh, we'll have to see because uh, yeah. yeah, my dad is very knit worthy. So good. I haven't made him any socks yet. I haven't. Uh, well, yeah. he has a sock drawer full of them, doesn't he? He has some, but yeah. you know, he'd like to have more. Yeah, like about twelve or something. I forget <laughs> what he said. <laughs> right. So for whips, so the. Uh, whips. So, okay, so today is the Briggs and Little Cow. We're starting that today. Now, I haven't had a chance to cast on because I just got back from North Bay yesterday, but I had already planned what I wanted to do. So, I'm going to show you this sweater. I'll this sweater was knit by my aunt's friend, and I used to call it, she knit it for me when, or was, yeah, she knit it for me when I was about five or six years old, and I used to call it my Ernie sweater. As, as an Ernie Bert, Bert from Sesame Street, because I loved this sweater. I wore it all the time, but look at it. I used to have an Ernie doll. Me too. I still have a little puppet you I stick your hand inside? No, not a puppet, an actual, an actual oh, tutu. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I should have brought him. He's still at home. <laughs> a little bit kind of swoosh and worn out, but he's still at home. <laughs> but this is my Ernie sweater. And I thought I would love to do something like this here again for me. And I still have a lot of yarn left over from my trek. I wore the trek a couple of podcasts ago. And so these are... Yeah. Oh, grab these ones right too. The colors that I want to use for my Ernie's sweater. Yeah. And this is in Briggs a little sport. Yes. So if you were to knit flax light, yeah, I'm I think thinking, that would be a really good I think, gauge. yeah, I was thinking of that too. Yeah. And um, so what I was talking to you, I think I might need another color. So I'm wondering, I was asking this to, I was asking Robin, should I go with khaki or should I go with black? I think I would go with black. Yeah, eh? That yeah, would pop I even more. So. Yeah. Because the khaki would be too blendy. I yeah, think. it would blend too much with the yeah the, the two greens probably. I think the black I would do that or the Oxford gray. 
or dark gray, I guess it's called. I would do the one of those, yeah. black or dark gray. Dark gray actually is heavy, might be, so that yeah, might be Yeah, it might be better. It, it won't, yeah, because the black would probably be too strong, too poppy. Yeah, but I think for these the dark colors. gray would be... Yeah. I think so too. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. Yeah. Cool. That'd be nice. So, I wonder, that's a really good idea. I like your idea. Yes. And that was inspired not only by your Ernie sweater, but also by that striped sweater that Andrea yep. Mowry has, right? Yeah. 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 I've been wanting to do a striped sweater for a, for a while now, so. Yeah. It's and a I'm, good way to use up your leftovers. Yeah. And so I'm going to try and follow the stripes, the, the amount of rows that she's used on this sweater here. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. That'll be Should nice. The flow. Yeah. Huh. I might have to copy you. That's fine. Okay. Do I have to like footnote you? So yeah. <laughs> Stick you in my As for notes? the Ernie sweater. Yes. <laughs> so That's what you should. Yeah. <laughs> That's possible. Yeah. What are you working on? I am currently at the moment, I am working on my Strom cardigan. This is what I'm knitting. As we're speaking, mm -hmm. I got, there are a couple of people, two or three people that have finished their cardigans already. Oh, yeah. I'm still working on mine too. Yeah. But yeah. There's my body. I'm making it A-line because I'm A-line. <laughs> <laughs> making it X, I cast on for the next size up and I'm decreasing down to the size that I need for around my bust. Yeah. So that's the body. I have my two sleeves done. Yay. And I was sitting there looking at my, my sleeves and noticed I had made a mistake in, what? Yeah, in the chart. It's not really noticeable. So at first I thought, see here it's really crisp and clean. And I'll see if I can show you. In one of them, I can't tell now through the camera. I think it's this one that's really crisp and clean, and this one I think is a slightly messed up. In one of my rows, what happened? I think I was offset with one row. Uh, and at it first, doesn't really show. It doesn't really saying... show. You have to really concept. I mean, yeah. if you compare the two, you just kind of go and oh, this one looks kind of blurry, and this one looks really crisp. Right, right. But I don't think it's enough to really notice it. And it takes me, I have to concentrate to find the mistake. So at first I thought I would duplicate stitch it to change it. But I, I don't think, think so. I'm going to worry about no, it. No, I think you're good. It would have to take a lot of concentration to, yeah. to find the mistake. I'm not going to worry about it. But that's my strong cardi. I have heaps and heaps and heaps and inches and inches and inches of length Lovely to brown. Yes. yes. <laughs> I like this yarn. It is nice, yes. It feels like it's more, it's thicker and heavier. heavier. Than, yeah. than the regular Jameson and Smith yep. jumper weight. This well, is the Supreme, I think, right? Is it the Supreme? Yes. It's a Supreme. Yeah. So, but it's really nice. I love this color. I love the color combos. I love yeah, the pink the and the mauve. Really, yeah, yeah. Love it. And I like how the color work is kind of subtle. It's not mm. in your face. Anyway, it's I really like this Gorgeous sweater. pattern, yeah. So I'm hoping to get that done. But that's what I'm working on as we're talking. Yeah. Do you have more whips to show? Uh, well, I'm still working, I'm still working on the fiddly bits cowl, and so remember I said that I was going to try to, like, do little miniature stripes, and it uh, doesn't really show, but if they're not as thick as the other ones, because I wanted to make it a bit different, like, have one side oh, with it yes. thicker, and then the other side. A gradient. It doesn't really work ish. with a gradient-ish, but, I mean, the, the rows are a bit, yeah, you can't really tell right now, because I just started it. So I'm It'll still working nice. on that. Yeah. It'll be nice. And then I just started, you know, um, Robin, <laughs> sorry, this person here <laughs> was talking about, she um, is participating in Anna Knitter's Blanket Knit Along. Mm -hmm. And so that got me like thinking, oh, that would be kind of nice to do a blanket. And I've been thinking about doing it a blanket for a while too and I'm interested in the mitered square one and I've done one before but kind of lost interest with it because I think I made the squares too small and I kind of it was uh, taking forever okay so these ones here so I'm gonna I started two three days ago I guess so these are 49 stitches the squares are a little bit bigger and I think our friend Kim is doing you've seen Kim before in our podcast she's doing like a a version of the mitered square blanket. It's appropriate memory. that we're talking about her in our works in progress. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Poor Kim. laughs> I know. <laughs> Just make, referring back to that one podcast where we introduced her as our work in progress. So I'm also cool. working on that too. Cool. Yeah. I'm uh, also, okay, so she brought up the blanket thing. Yeah. So I'll talk about the blanket thing. So Anna Knitter 
she and I, I guess, had the same thoughts at the same time, but we weren't <laughs> connected at all, except through the cosmos. Yes. So she was planning on doing this, and I was planning on making a crochet blank with my minis that we had from mm. ours from, uh, oh, Pretty String. Oh, pretty I gotta start on that sea oh. glass. <laughs> Anyways. Pretty String. <laughs> we carry her yarn in our shop. She's another one. Yeah. Like, she did uh, the... The advent calendar we had from her this year so was fun. about puns, and yes. the puns are really funny, or punny, as she would say. <laughs> some of them just make me laugh and laugh and laugh. Yeah. And uh, and some of the colorways, you see them in the, this is what I found, is that when you see them in the in the mini skein, you kind of go, oh yeah, that's nice. But then you start to work with it, mm. and then suddenly it goes from being, oh, yeah, that's pretty, to, wow, gorgeous. that's really pretty. And I keep going from square to square to square going oh, this one's my favorite <laughs> this one's my favorite you can only have one favorite right but otherwise it doesn't it's not a favorite but this is my stack of squares that i have so far i so forget how many do you still have some left over after you would oh uh, yeah i'm you gonna have lots, about yeah. 75 squares in total nice because i'm getting three of these five inch mini uh, out of the granny squares out of each mini and the getting. minis are 20 grams, right? And the minis are 20 grams. Nice. So each color, it's just... Here. Okay, I'm going to hold on to the pack and you can show them. Okay, thanks. And I, I'm not going to tell you the names because I don't remember. Very but nice. I'm using her her bands as my bookmarks. So when I go through a book, I'll find her thing and go... Because <laughs> <laughs> I really... Some of them just really Ooh, make me laugh, nice. laugh. And like the colors are just... Yeah. <gasps> I love know, that. Right? So some of them are really bold and crazy, and some of them are more subtle and just pretty. That's that's romantic. I like that. Yeah. A romantic they're just color. Just really, really nice. Yeah. So I'm really enjoying making this. Uh, now Anna Knitter also put out a challenge in her Ravelry thread to make one square a day. Mm. But I'm working that on. That makes me think of strawberries. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, it's really pretty. Um, so I'm trying to do two squares a day. Okay. Because they're smaller. Right. And I would kind of like to get this done. <coughs> I read like look at that That's one. That's gorgeous. This one is yeah, very pretty. That's a very romantic pretty. color way. <laughs> yeah. But in the skein, it was kind of like eh. But in real life, yeah. like when you start to make it, well, actually, it's a little bit more than eh. But no, no, but yeah. You don't realize just how beautiful I it love is this until too. you start working on it. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Anyway, I love her. <laughs> gorgeous. So there's that. So I'm working on this and I have, I will have 75 of these squares in total. Nice. I am uh, lining each of them, lining, not lining. Aligning. I'm making a border around yeah. each of them in Opal, just the yeah. white sock yarn. And then how are you going to put that together? Are you going to crochet them like together type deal? Or are you going to do another I think it's thing? A, I think it's a slip stitch yeah. I put together. I still have to research that, but yeah. I think you can do it with a, some kind of a crochet slip stitch. Yeah. So that's that blanket and nice. then I have my friend Bo was a big spinner and she can't spin anymore but I have oh, this is all of fun this yarn. is her hand spun very nice she's very much in, whereas I'm into two ply she really likes three ply oh interesting so I have her yarn I'm supposed to be making it into something to auction off to raise money for her care yeah but I thought I would make this I researched how big this top like the mattress size of a single bed is okay and so this is length. Okay. It's actually, I think they said 30 inches, and this is working out 48, 50 inches wide. Oh, so that'll be a nice. Uh... It takes a long time. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so this is the granny stripe blanket, but I'm not doing stripes. I'm just doing her yarn, however it comes, because it's hand spun and it's done from her different clubs she belonged to. So it's just changing colors mm -hmm. automatically. I am doing four rows a day, but now that work is started up started again. Started up again. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to pull back to one square of these squares a day and two maybe rows. and two rows yeah. which I think is the equivalent of one square because yeah. I am this is all I'm doing in a day now and I'd like to work on other things too so so you're not that monogamous <laughs> no this is my <laughs> but this is kind of like oh yeah Anna Nitter said she wanted to see if people could do this every day for six months Okay. So that's kind of my personal challenge. So this nice. is kind of my drink of my coffee, right? Yeah. So I get up in the morning, I drink my yeah, coffee, and I do you this. do some of that. Yeah. Because this is kind of like just part of my day. Is I doesn't feel like it's um, a project. It feels like right. it's part of my day. Your and ritual, enjoying... your morning ritual. Type there we deal. go. Yeah. That's this nice. is becoming an evening ritual because, <laughs> you know, 
stuff, right? But well, you yeah. gotta have an evening ritual too. That's good. Yeah, there we go. I have my days <laughs> scattered with rituals. <laughs> we'll call it that. <laughs> so then I have that. Unfortunately, I haven't had any sock knitting time, but I oh. did finish this sock. Yay! I was trapped somewhere. Where was I, I kept, trapped? I, I, every time you show me this, it's like, oh, I gotta get started on mine too. I love these colors. Yeah, this is the vintage tinsel yeah. by West Yorkshire Spinners. We have none. Oh, I don't think we had. I think you bought the Maybe last one. Game. Oh, possibly. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have any. We'll get more we'll, in. We'll get closer, some again next year. Yeah, yeah, close in the fall. Yeah, because there was a huge yeah. shortage. Yeah. Shortage. Wow. We Look how gorgeous think, that is. Well, we didn't think you were going to get any. No, it yeah. showed up one day, so we were very, we caught ourselves very lucky. Yeah. So anyway, I have that to finish. Do you have any more whips? Because I think I have one more. Uh, no. But that's all I've been making. I have tons at home that I haven't really touched at, touched on yet, so. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I have my Briggs and Little Cast on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Show your cat. But what, that's all I've got. What are you going to be knitting again? What's the sweater? Mathalda. Mathalda by Jean. Right. right. Those are the colors that you were not sure that are completely out of your. Completely. Yeah. I can't wait to see that together. <laughs> your comfort zone. Yeah. I yeah. had to stop knitting it because now it's the color work part and I can't. You need look to at the camera yeah. and, and yeah. do color work so that's why i'm doing stocking stitch but that's my cast on i did this this morning so we've got to start i'm very happy yeah and my last thing i think i talked about the last podcast mm -hmm. was, i love these colors together thank you if this is the <laughs> even star shawl and this is where i found all my stitch markers are <laughs> i have a million so you want me to hold that? i think it's every 20 stitches i have a stitch marker and this this shawl had close to 700 stitches in this last round. Oh my god. So what's that? 700 divided, let's say 680 divided by 20. That's a lot of stitch markers. So I'm going to have them all back, half, hopefully. And you added, remember the last podcast, she wasn't sure if she should add the orange back on? And she, you and did. I did. Right? Yeah. And I think you did a good, it was a good move. Thank you. Because you, you, it kind of goes, it kind of gradients it, right? A yeah. A little bit more. So. Yeah. It's, it kind of looks more like it was intended. Yeah. So there's my yellow, my orange, my pink, and now I'm into my purple. I'm almost done. I just have to do this edging now. Yeah. Thank you, Sylvie. Uh, just this edging to do now. And I don't know if I'm going to have enough of the mauve or purplish lavender, whatever this color mm. is. To go before I go into the navy blue, it's quite possible that I'll switch into the navy as my edging before I'm done. Um, but this will be done. Oh, my, my dog's having a nightmare. Oh. <laughs> if you hear her whelping, it's, she's it's chasing her. after squirrels. Somebody, I don't know. Am I running away from something? I'm not sure. So I think that's it for knitting. Yeah, me too with... for now. Yeah. To spinning. On to spinning. This, this is going to be short. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was in North Bay, so I didn't bring any spinning with me. Um, I just grabbed my knitting bags and 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 drove. Drove. <laughs> I was going to say and ran, but really I drove. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'd be a long run. Yeah. But what were you spinning on? I was just spinning on my oh, Countess of Blaze. Yes. I keep wanting to say Barefoot Contessa, <laughs> but she's a chef. Yeah. So anyway, Countess of Blaze. When she was closing her shop and she had her stuff on sale, I bought seven skeins of her BFL. So that's what I'm working on right now. And I just have one bobbin done. I nice. think I'm going to do a three ply. Oh yeah? But I think so. I think I'm spinning it finally enough. I'm hoping so to get a sport weight, might okay. be a DK weight, which is okay too. But I'm just, anyway, just got this one bobbin finished, but I'm not really spinning a lot. Yeah. Although I did get my wheel back, I have what I call my honey. Oh yes, I'll just pop it right here because you said to quick. Uh, okay, I can yeah. send a better picture too. But it's um, it's a CPW. It's Petadies spinning wheel from Quebec, where the nuns used to sit and spin and make yarn to yeah. to use for clothing all day. And uh, I got this wheel about twenty years ago, but through time it kind of disinte mm. parts of it kind of disintegrated, and I just was too busy with work and my son when he was little and stuff and. Anyway, basically, just didn't get to use it for a really long time. Somebody offered to fix it for me. Yeah. And it came back last week, and it has been such a joy just to have it back. It's just, it's not the prettiest color in the world. Oh, I like it. Yeah, it's kind of a, like it. a weird gold. I'm sure it's a lead base paint. <laughs> Possibly. But I was told by somebody who's an expert in this area, she was telling me not to strip it and, and that yeah. takes away the value of yeah, it. Yeah, leave it as it is. But it's kind of the character of it too. But yeah. I love spinning on it because you can, the wood for the petal is uh, 
all kind of worn down. So it's kind of like when you go to Europe and you go through cathedrals and stuff and you mm. walk up the steps and the rock steps are all yeah. grooved from people walking on it for centuries. It's kind of like that. So it has that nice sensation of when I'm trundling on it, I can feel all the people before oh, me trundling nice. on it. It's just kind of a nice feeling. And I've been losing my love for merino wool just because it's so ubiquitous. But I have to say, I have found my love for merino again. Really? For, yes, for the wheel because it's this perfect fiber to spin nice. on this on this wheel. And so, look out! Look out, merino! <laughs> yeah, look out, merino! Look out! Uh, yeah, fiber pusher fairy. Yeah. As soon as I finish up my stuff for me, I'll be coming back for some more <laughs> because uh, wow, it's such a joy to spin on this wheel again. So maybe you'll see something that I've spun on that wheel. Nice. But I, like I said, I just haven't been spinning. I'm too busy crocheting my <laughs> for my for my blankets. Nice. I yeah, like I said, I haven't been spinning, but I have to get back on that because yeah, because it's spinning. Yeah, that can be your coffee morning ritual. It could be. Yeah, very true. Because you said you're gonna start getting up early yeah. in the morning, right? <laughs> uh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I wanna, I'll, I'll send you a, i'll phone you i want to change because i i i guess you could say i it became a habit where the evenings later in the night was my time because my son was in bed my husband was in bed and i was alone and it was like my time you know and so maybe i spent maybe too long knitting or spinning into the night when I should have been gone to bed because I had to get up early to go to work the next day. So I wanted to kind of like switch that around. So go to bed early, but wake up early and I would still be on my own because the other two are still sleeping and it would still be my time, right? And it would be a little bit healthier for me too. It's nice, it's <laughs> so, nice and yeah. quiet. It's really peaceful in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, Stefan is, well, not unfortunately. <laughs> That doesn't sound very good. But he's up, so I'm not alone. Oh, but that's okay. okay because he doesn't want to talk in the morning. He's a morning. He's not a morning person. He has no choice but to get up early, I guess. But he does. Work. Yeah. But no. Even if uh, he even just gets weekends, up early, he just gets up early. But oh. he doesn't want to talk in the morning. So then it's fine. I can completely ignore him. Yeah. And just I'm sure he's trying to ignore stuff. you too. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. He does a good job. So then I just get my coffee and I sit and I do whatever. And as long yeah. as I'm not blocking the TV, right? Because he likes to watch the news, the Quebec mm. news. So he's slowly waking up that way, I guess. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll talk to me by supper time, but <laughs> oh my god, that's a long time to wake up. <laughs> well, he, goes to, he goes to work, right? So I don't see yeah. him until he comes home. Yeah, so. yeah. That's funny. Anyway, <laughs> poor guy. So anyway, so that's my schedule. I like to have my coffee, and I started lighting a candle every morning. That's that's really nice. It's I it's think like it, it is. makes you like full present and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. quite like that. So I'm gonna be continuing that. Yeah. Even though soon it's gonna be bright. Still, you still have yeah. that yeah. that little ritual of lighting the candle and you're just there and you're in the moment, right? Yeah, I think I'm going to continue that. So that's yeah. very enjoyable. Okay, so for sewing, do you have anything? No, nope. You're wearing it. I'm wearing it. It's been on my mind because I bought some fabric to do another um, Frankie T. So yeah, I need to get on that yeah, too. Yeah, me too. Yes, I want to see that because she bought fabric i think it was it's it was foxes. foxes i'm like you can wear your fox and i can wear my owls <laughs> who's gonna win one's a predator and one's prey <laughs> no no that we live close cohesive <laughs> yes. Yes. we do oh you at the end of this thing you're gonna have to show the picture of the coyote going through our backyard yes yeah you'll see that at the like, end oh my god yeah he didn't care about the sheep <laughs> good it is good but it's you know it's good. I, I wonder <laughs> you how... You might have enough rabbits around or whatever for him to... But I wonder to... if maybe they don't like the taste of sheep. Maybe they only eat sheep if they're desperate. Well, like, that's what I mean. You probably... There's probably other animals, enough animals around that he's doesn't care he about He likes the sheep. taste better. Yeah. It's kind of like, am I going to eat a potato or a turnip? <laughs> exactly. I need a potato. I'm not in the mood for a turnip. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. This is silly. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to sewing. So in sewing, I've been talking for a long time. Well, we've been talking for a long yeah. time about hand sewing. And I've been meaning to make my son a t-shirt. And I started, and I think I mentioned before, I, I can't remember. I'll do it again. Where I will never cut yes. cotton knit jersey with scissors yes. again. <laughs> Next time I'm using a rotary blade. Yeah. Because it moves and shifts and everything. And if you thought that was bad for cutting, you should see trying to sew. <laughs> by hand. <laughs> by hand. Or even, I imagine by sewing machine, it wouldn't be any different. It wasn't too, too bad. Really? Because this is Jersey. But and I think the only time, well, I had little issues here with the collar. 
uh, but maybe that's my inexperience as well. Um, but I didn't have a lot much of a hard time with the hand, with the machine. I think what it is is with the machine, you have the foot as your guide, right? Yes. You have that guide for your distance. Yeah. With hand sewing, I tried to find, I wanted to have a quarter inch seam allowance and um, it was hard. I couldn't draw on. I got Taylor's chalk. I had those pencils mm. that you can use. But it's really hard to draw on knit jersey because the fabric keeps shifting and it pulls instead yeah. of making a line. Anyway, complete nightmare. So then I got a quarter inch <laughs> painter's tape, with like masking tape, which I'm going to use for my quarter inch seam. And I'm going to tape that sucker on. And then I'm going to sew at the edge of this because, oh my days, I was having so much difficulty. So I got this from Amazon. Anyway, it's quarter inch painter's tape and I'm gonna have a little strip that I'm gonna sew that. I was waiting for it because before I did the sleeves because the sleeves are fitted mm. and I didn't figure I could screw up my seam allowances. On the other parts, I wasn't too, too worried about it, but I will show you what I've done. The part that surprises me is that it doesn't take as long as I thought to hand sew. Well, in that book, that the author of the book, she did mention that. I know, but she's yeah. a practice professional hand sewer. <laughs> I need to experience this for myself. That's a theory. I need yeah, to prove yeah. the theory. So what I've been doing, I found what I've been doing is like, well, this should take longer than it does. And I'm really enjoying this. So I've been just, one day I sewed a shoulder and then I stopped because okay. I wanted to draw you this out, right? More, yeah. yeah. So then the other day I sewed another shoulder. All right, that's enough. And then I waited two days. <laughs> I sewed a side seam. Nice. But it really doesn't take as long as I thought. Sorry, the drape isn't all that great because again, I had problems with that. Uh, the seam and the quarter inch, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So anyway, and I put this on my son. I've got my side seams done. I've got my shoulders done. And so now I just have to do, sorry. The, I was just going to show this oh, here, yeah. thanks. So now I just have to do the sleeves. Nice. And then sew, the, those, sew those in. So I have one sleeve sewn at the underarm, one. But then again, I was waiting for this to do yeah. it more. So now I can, now I feel like I can go ahead, but... My dad keeps wanting to know why. He said, you've got a sewing machine. You've got a serger. <laughs> Use why, <it. laughs> in heaven's name, would you do a hand sew on a t-shirt? And I said, because it's enjoyable. It's slow fashion. It's enjoyable and, and it's, you're present and you're just enjoying, your, enjoying it, right? Enjoying the moment. Yes. And it's also a thing of uh, a feeling of, I don't know what's the, not pride, but accomplishment it's feeling of accomplishment yeah. i guess just the fact that i know that i can yeah so and i'll i'll do it again <laughs> my dad would just about passed out in shock <laughs> we're gonna do it again so now he's inspired to try sewing his own t-shirts nice but he's not doing it by hand okay but still at least but he's still. gonna try sewing yeah, that's good so he wanted to know what pattern i had it's the elba t-shirt pattern from elba textiles i guess okay yeah so uh, it was a free pattern i don't know if it still is but it was when i got this so um He's inspired now to sew Good. his own t-shirts. So nice. that will be very cool. Yeah. So that's that. And this is just the beginning. Yeah. My next hand sewn project is. It's very cool. Are you going to make some underpants? Yay. Better than knitting. Because <laughs> 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 I know you've been wanting to knit underwear and I'm like, no, no, that's not happening here. <laughs> but that I would, this year I would do. <laughs> Had uh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Tilly in the buttons has a hand. Yeah. Well, no, it's not hand sewn. It's been a machine sewn. But she has underpants pattern. So and they have she has the different types. Like if you want a bikini or blah blah blah. That's very cool. All those different kinds. Yeah. I'm just gonna get find the one that matches the underpants that I do have from Mark's Work Warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the hard thing is you have to find folded elastic for the. I guess the waistband inside the yeah. legs and that's really hard to find. Well, I guess not a lot of people are sewing their own, own underwear. So I guess, you know. I suppose. It's why it's difficult to find them. Yeah, yeah. so here it is. This is uh, an example of, of folding elastics. You can see kind of a line down the middle. And yeah. I'm assuming that's where you fold it. I don't, don't know which, oh, maybe that way. So then you would sew it around here. So you'd have this edge. So you're sewing, you, this kind of covers the edges of your of your leg seam and your waistband seam. Yeah. So I will tell you where I found this. I have four different colors that I got. And this is from a company called Stitch in the Ditch. And they are located in BC, judging by the area code of 250. Mm -hmm. So they have this stuff and she sent it 
quite quickly. And yeah, like, DC, it always takes a long time to get mail from BC just because of the distance and, yeah. and stuff. But um, I was very happy to find this stuff there. So she has that, plus she's a quilting store, online clothing shop. So she has other nice stuff, but I shied away. I didn't look there. I just got what I needed because I'm trying not to buy stuff. Yeah. So that will be cool. Oh, I, I was hoping to, to have it started for this podcast, but you know, yeah, time, work. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's it for sewing. Okay. On to weaving. Yay. So for weaving, um, remember when I said I was going to do a tea towel, a vintage Christmas tea towel? Um, I screwed up, but I still wanted, wanted to go ahead. It, it became too, it, okay, so let's start from the beginning, I'll back up. First of all, I decided that I was going to try to do a direct warping, I guess you call that. That's not happening anymore for me. I'm not doing that. Oh, just, yeah? ugh, no, to be I'm just, yeah, well, with the table loom, it isn't. Oh, it's not, eh? <laughs> oh, okay. Or maybe because it's my inexperience, but no, I'm going back to the warp, the actual, is it warping? Yeah. You got to, yeah, I'm going to count it out that way. Number one, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Number two, when I was um, planning out my tea towel, so for, with the table that I have, table that I have, it's a four shaft, um, and there's 50 reads for each shaft. Um, I miscounted. When I was counting the reads, I only counted the reads in the first shaft. So I didn't take into consideration that when you're warping, you warp one in one read, shaft one, second goes into the read one, second shaft, third goes into read one, third shaft, and so on. So I had more than 50. So this is why it came out narrow, narrower than I had planned because I only had planned for the 50 and not for the... So it's gonna be 50 times four? Yeah. Which is 200. 200. It would have been wide enough if I would have, if I, if I did that, but I didn't think of that. It didn't take that into consideration. Anyways, it was warped. Everything was ready to go. I thought, you know what, too bad. I'm just gonna do it anyways. It's just gonna be a table runner. Well, no, the project said, no, 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 no. You're not doing this right. You're gonna have to redo it. So it started to like on its own, I guess I didn't tight it. I didn't have it tied up tight enough on the bar in the back of okay. the loom. So it started to loosen. <sighs> so I thought to myself, you know what, this, this is the universe telling me that I can't go on. I have to restart and do it properly. But in French, like we say, c'est un mal pour un bien. So it's something bad that happened, but turned out good anyways, because my plan was to have my warps. To, I had some stripes of red, green, and tiny stripes of white. And my weft was going to be white, but here it is. So this is what I had was able to weave up to date before it all started to loosen up. But see what happened is the white kind of washes out the green and the red. And this is not at all what I had in mind. I really like how it turned out here though with the red and the green. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is continue with the red and the green, but have like a, like a small stripe of white going in between. So I'm going to try that instead. So that's why, you know, it turned out to be good, even though it didn't work out at the beginning. So it showed me that this is not at all, it wasn't at all what I thought it was gonna turn out to be. So it will be ready for next Christmas. <laughs> so I'm gonna warp it again, properly, <laughs> the old way. 200? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and start over again, which is fine. Yeah. But it's nice, it's good to know that the fabric feels really nice. It is, it's very nice. Yeah. And it's not even washed yet, right? No, Imagine if it was washed, it would be, be nice. nice. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. So you know to add an extra little warp distance you can make me a towel? Of course. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so that's Just my that. weaving woes. <laughs> Very nice. I've been trying to just break stuff up and just do a little bit every day. That's good. So I cut some stuff. <laughs> so this is for my rug, my uh, kitchen mat that I've been talking about for forever. That I still haven't warped my loom for, but I'm closer because now yeah. I have the... The, the one strips. inch strips that I have to put in. Um, my friend Jane was telling me um, about how to join them together, but I still have to find out what she was talking about, a no sew way to join mm -hmm. them together. I may or may not need to do, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, those are cut up. Nice. So that's that. And then this is my thick stuff for my my uh, weft. Oops, I guess I should show you the naked side. <laughs> and then this is my warp. So I just have to do that stuff. That'll happen, but I'm just not 
I'm just not pressuring myself. Yeah, don't. It'll happen when you're ready. I for usually it. pressure myself. I usually try to strive to get everything done, and I'm just not. You're not Superwoman. We would yeah. all love to be Superwoman, but we're not. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Yeah. So I think that's it for now. I think. I think you're right. I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing this. You better hurry up and start. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> no, talking about no pressure. <laughs> it's a good pressure, that one. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it for now, eh? I think so. We've talked about everything that we're up to, basically, yeah. right? Yeah. We haven't even talked, really, because you've been gone. Oh, Knit City. Oh, so yes. Some of the pinging that you may or may not have heard was uh, we're going to, I guess, Knit City is back on in Montreal in mm, April. April. Yeah. So I wasn't even tracking. I wasn't even checking emails. And uh, one of our friends, well, Kim, she yes. says, hey, it's on. And she's got us a room booked already. Yay. And we've got plans. We have a driver. So I guess we're going unless something happens again. Yeah. So that's good. So we're all going to be boosted. Yeah. By the end of the month, I think we'll all have our booster oh, shots. Oh, I think in. so, yeah. So that'll be good. But we're all in a bubble. We all stay home and don't see anybody or do anything except knit. Yep. <laughs> and spin. That's it. So, yeah. So it'll be really nice. I'm looking forward to that. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. We had planned this like two years ago in 2020. We were doing all the things. We were going to do Edinburgh Yard Festival. Yeah. We were going to do Rhinebeck. We were going to do Knit City. Yeah. And then COVID hit. And then COVID hit. There was something else we were going to do too. I can't remember. Another festival of some kind. And yeah. then COVID hit. And that was our year. Yeah. It's not going to be our year this year either, but maybe we'll do something which would be which would be nice. Yeah. Oh, Indigo Hill has opened up her shop in Van Creek Hill for anybody who's local to us. She mm. also has online stuff. She has yeah. stuff that has more to do with handwork, um, with embroidery and needlework really nice. as opposed to like knitting and stuff. Although she may have knitting stuff. I'm not sure. But she does like sashiko embroidery. Yeah. She does hand sewing. I bought that kit. I need to get going I on that. I too. Yeah. Well, along with my cross stitch. <laughs> For yes. my son, but yeah, I don't know if he's gonna like it, which is why I stopped working on it. So uh, I'll like it, but I'm not sure about him, so I wasn't feeling pressured to get it done. Okay, anyway, I think we're probably just blah blahing. Yeah, we are. So <laughs> we'll stop the blah blahing and we will wish all of you a very happy new year. Let's hope that this year is better than the last yeah. two, <laughs> and uh, take care of yourselves. And we'll see you soon in another couple of weeks. Yes, and please subscribe to our channel if you enjoy watching us. And a thumbs up. Yes. Which would be really nice. Very much so. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Can you see my ears? I can see my ears! <laughs>